wanted to go ahead and get started. So I'd like to welcome you, welcome you all today to Ecom Engines webinar with Shannon Roddy of Marketplace Seller Forces. Today, he's going to be talking about how to launch, grow, and protect your brand on Amazon. Um, and I'm Becky Trowbridge. I'm the content strategist here at Ecom Engine, and I'll just be fielding your questions. So send them throughout the webinar and we'll answer them at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then just to tell you a little bit about Ecom Engine as we get started, we make software tools for Amazon sellers. Um, one of our major tools is Feedback 5, which is available in 15 international marketplaces. I know Shannon is definitely a fan. Um, Feedback 5 is a reputation management software. You can send review requests, get review alerts, use the request or review functionality, see your order volume, and a whole lot more. Um, as you know, reviews are really essential for brands, and they work in collaboration with a lot of the concepts that Shannon's gonna be talking about today. So if you need some help getting reviews, definitely check out Feedback 5. Um, we also have Market Scout, which is a product research tool for Amazon sellers, Restock Pro, which is an FBA inventory management tool, and then Smart Price, which is an algorithmic repricer. And then I wanted to introduce my friend, Shannon Roddy. Um, I met Shannon a couple of years ago at Midwest Ecom in Minnesota. Um, Shannon's a fantastic person. He has founded this business called Marketplace Seller Forces, and he's worked with over 100 brands and manufacturers to help launch, grow, and protect their brands on Amazon, which is what he's going to be talking to you about today. Um, in that time, he's helped successfully launch over 23 number one new releases, which is amazing, four number one bestsellers, and 29 Amazon's choice, choice products. So Shannon is incredible, has a ton of knowledge to share. Um, buckle in, get your notebook. This is definitely going to be a lot of great information. So Shannon, I'll let you take it away. Awesome, thanks for that intro, Becky. And yeah, those stats, uh, we stopped counting at some point because there were just too many products, too many clients, but it's, it's such a passion of mine to really empower brand owners uh, with the strategies, tools, and resources to, as Becky mentioned, successfully launch, grow, and protect their brands on Amazon. That's really our bread and butter. So. Uh, with that said, I'm going to get started today. Um, if this sounds like you, okay, you want to start selling on Amazon, but are feeling a little overwhelmed, that's perfect, okay? If you're already selling on Amazon, but want to increase in sales, which is usually pretty much everybody, um, maybe your brand is growing, but you're having trouble protecting it, okay, we've got a solution for you that I'm going to mention at the end, near the end of the webinar. But my goal from this webinar today is to help brand owners who are selling on Amazon who want to increase sales and retain control of their brand without violating Amazon policy. Okay, so that's really the, the crux of what, the content that we're gonna um, cover today. So here's some, some high level truths. I wanna talk about some, some principles of, of Amazon success before we dive into some of the content. So in order to increase sales and maintain control of your brand, you have to have what I call a detailed Amazon brand strategy, okay? This is specific to your brand and your strategy on Amazon. And then in order to execute a successful brand strategy, you have to have the right information, tools and resources. So again, I'm, I'm gonna give you some insight into how to get all that uh, later on. Okay, who this webinar is for, obviously uh, for brand owners, um, but also very applicable to manufacturers if you manufacture your own products, inventors if you've created your own product or invented a product, uh, entrepreneurs if you've bought a brand or sold a brand, uh, like to invest in companies, this is gonna be great for you. And then authorized resellers who have exclusive distribution, maybe for a certain territory on Amazon or for the Amazon platform itself. Uh, who this webinar is not for and what we don't cover, uh, finding products to sell, we're not going to cover, sourcing FBA products, no policy violating hacks, everything we do is in line with Amazon TOS. Uh, we don't really cover anything with retail arbitrage and it's not a get rich quick scheme, okay? It's foundational principles to launch, grow, and protect your brand and business on the Amazon. So a little bit of background about me um, as uh, Becky and I were talking. Um, I actually started my Amazon journey about 10 years ago. Um, my wife and I had recently come back from Africa. We'd spent about 15 months there volunteering with an NGO. And this is us in front of the, uh, the, the incredible crater there. And I had, before we left, I had developed this product. And my one goal when I got back, I'd said, I want to get this on Amazon. Okay. I had no idea how to do it. I had no idea what a SKU was. I didn't know what a UPC code was, but I kind of piecemealed it together and I put the product up and I just lost money the first year. And this is a niche product, very low search volume, um, but I was very excited to finally get on the platform. And the second year started to gain a little bit of traction, got a couple of sales, a first couple product reviews. Um, 
and actually made $115 net. So my first profitable year. And it was in the third year that I was also learning SEO that I had this epiphany. I said, I wonder if SEO works on Amazon the same way it does on Google. And so I did the keyword research and I realized there was one keyword that my product was missing, one keyword. And I added that keyword to the title. And the next year I did $1,500 in, in net revenue. Again, it's, it's pretty niche product, pretty low search volume, but it's continued to double or increase every single year since then. So this applies to you because for me, I decided I never wanted to venture into a new business without having somebody who'd already been successful show me how to be successful as well. So there's two things you guys have to know about Amazon, especially if you're new. Uh, number one, Amazon's goal is to be the most consumer centric company in the world, right? That means by default, it is not the most seller centric. You know that if you've called customer service as a customer versus a seller, different experience, right? Um, the second thing is that the reason most brands fail selling on Amazon is because they don't know what they don't know. I call this the piecemeal approach, right? They got a little bit of information from YouTube and from a conference and a webinar, and those are great for additional information. But the problem is without all the information, you're typically not gonna succeed because it leaves gaps. And so I find that for the, most of the brand owners that I consult with, they're making Amazon decisions based on partial information, bad information, or in some cases, no information at all. So my goal is to provide brand owners with all of the information they need to be successful. Okay, does that sound good? Okay, so now some of you guys might be thinking, what's the difference between a private label and a brand? Because I know there's a lot of private labels and a lot of people are looking to scale to the brand level. So what does that mean? Number one, investing in intellectual property. So trademarks, uh, patents, developing new products, um, expanding into other e-commerce channels and retail, as well as building a social media presence, right? This gives you off Amazon brand awareness that can be so critical to help launch or grow your brand. So today we're gonna to cover how to launch your brand, right? Effectively researching and integrating SEO keywords to increase what we call discoverability. Number two, we're gonna cover growing your brand, how to leverage Amazon advertising um, to organically rank your products and increase profit. And then lastly, how a registered trademark can help your, protect your brand from competitors. So with that said, I need everybody to buckle in uh, we're going to take questions at the end. So if you have those, you can put those in the question section and Becky's going to be fielding those at the end. Put them in there, but, but strap in because we're going to go through this and it's going to be a lot of really fun, really good information. Okay, so how to launch your brand using SEO research and implementation. Okay, the key to success on Amazon, the goal of pretty much every brand is to be able to organically rank for your product's top converting keywords. Okay, that means if a customer searches a term that you're going to show up at the top, okay? And we start by discussing this, this concept of the Amazon flywheel, okay? And basically you, you just do this over and over again. You start by optimizing your listings and then you launch your products by driving targeted traffic to your listings and then you analyze the results. And you take the analysis from those results and put it back into optimization as well as your advertising. So we're gonna be looking at your sessions. We're gonna be looking at your conversion rate. Uh, we're gonna be looking at click-through rate. Um, you're going to be going through the product reviews to see what customers like about the product or don't like the questions they ask, the seller feedback, the customer service messages, what are they not understanding or getting about the product that you can include and in, incorporate into the listings and then drive more traffic and analyze from there. So we're going to start with a, a term that I coined a couple of years ago called the Amazon trifecta. Okay. And the Amazon trifecta is this discoverability plus buyability equals rankability. Okay, so discoverability has to do with the SEO keywords in your listing. And for those of you who are not familiar, SEO just means search engine optimization. So the SEO keywords that you include in your listing plus buyability, which means an optimized detail page equals rankability. So the organic rank of your product. And here's how that works. If we've got our product, our, our Max Blaster air purifier, right? And somebody searches air purifier, finds our product, and then adds to cart and buys that product, over time, our product will, will organically rank higher for the term air purifier, okay? It's really that simple. So in order to start the keyword research strategy, the first thing we're gonna do is you've gotta research your SEO keyword terms. Next, you're gonna determine the keyword relevance. And lastly, we're gonna integrate those SEO terms into our listings. So a great tool to do this, uh, Helium 10, They've got a great keyword research tool, definitely one of the best. And we can start by putting our initial seed terms in there 
air purifier, right? We can see the estimated monthly search volume. We can also see the keyword frequency um, that are associated with that search for volume. So like purifiers, home, smoke, uh, we can even see like room, large, that sort of thing. Um, and it's gonna give us tons and tons of keywords that we can uh, determine if they're relevant for our listing. You can even filter by specific SEO team terms. So for example, we've got air purifiers that we had allergies in there. We can see all the search terms that have uh, allergies in them. So air purifiers for allergies and pets or uh, air purifiers for allergies and pets, large room, right? These are all keywords that have great search volume. And the goal is to just download all this information. I like using Excel. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna sort by search volume. Now, some of you guys might be thinking, I don't even know how to come up with my initial terms for the product, okay? So if that's the case, you can actually start by doing competitor keyword research. So if you don't know the exact terms to start with for your product, if there are similar products on Amazon or competitor products, you can actually do what's called a reverse ASIN lookup and put the competitor's ASIN into, into this keyword tool with Helium 10, and you can get all the search terms that they organically rank for. Now, just because they organically rank for it doesn't mean it's relevant, but it's gonna give you those starting search terms, okay? Now, the other cool thing that you can do is use Amazon Smart Complete. So if we just go into amazon.com, I like to typically be logged out when I do this and just put in air purifier and it's gonna make suggestions based on other customers' high volume searches. So if I put in air purifier, we've got air, air purifiers for home, air purifiers for bedroom, for large room, air purifier HEPA and so forth. Okay, so this can give us some great keyword data uh, to incorporate into our research to see if we wanna add this to our listing. So we're gonna kind of end up with a, a pretty big list like this. Obviously this is truncated for this example, but we've got all these keywords and what we've done is we've sorted them by search volume, okay? Now here's the key. The goal is not to just go after the highest search volume terms. The goal is to find the search terms that intersect search volume and relevance, okay? Here's what I mean by that. Uh, you can go after a really high search volume term like air purifier, 650,000 searches a month, but it's not the perfect relevance per se, okay? So the higher the search volume, the less relevant it's probably gonna be. At the same time, you can go after a very relevant term with a very low search uh, volume. And even if you rank for it, it's great, but you're not gonna get a lot of sales. So you're really looking for those search terms in the middle that you have a good chance of ranking for, high relevance, high search volume intersection. Okay, some of you guys might be thinking, that's great, but I'm not sure how to determine which keywords are relevant for my product, okay? Very easy, I'm gonna show you. You just put them back into Amazon, okay? So what we do is we take that search term and we're not looking at the advertised uh, results at the top. Typically we get brand ads and sponsored product listings. You're gonna scroll down to view the organic search results because that's gonna show you what customers actually determine are the most relevant products for that search term, not what you know, sellers are willing to bid on. Okay, people will advertise on anything. We wanna see what the organic search results are because that's customer verification. Now, we also wanna determine a relevant search term. So we might think air purifier, odor eliminator. That sounds good. It's a great, you know, keyword. It's got tons of search volume. But when we put that into Amazon and we look at the products that show up, we can see that first of all, none of them are air purifiers. And that gives us a pretty good indication that it's not gonna be a keyword that we wanna target in our listing. Now we can add it maybe and try advertising on it, but what, what we're allowing ourselves to do is uh, get the validation from customers that this is not uh, a good search term for our product for we're trying to go after air, air uh, purifiers. Okay, so what we do is we then take this list and what I've done is I've highlighted the most important keywords that we still wanna include in our listing, whether or not we're targeting them specifically but obviously we, we have to include air purifier because that's what it is. So we've included some of the main ones in blue, but the, the ones we really want to target for this listing, this is a true HEPA air purifier. Okay, so, so I put that in green. That's the, the search term that I really want to target in the listing. And this is how we're going to take all these search terms and put them into it. So we're going to start by integrating our top SEO terms into the product title and typically the goal is to put the initial search term, your most highly search relevant term, as close to the front of the title as you possibly can. So Max Blaster, that's our brand name, and then immediately put that high search volume relevant term, okay? True HEPA air purifier. And then throughout the rest of the title, we can add our additional search terms like home and office, et cetera. 
you don't necessarily want to keep keyword stuff. It has to be readable for customers as well as for the Amazon algorithm. But what we can see is beyond the keywords, pretty much all we're doing is talking about the unique value proposition, right? Sleep design removes 99.9% uh, of allergens and odors, et cetera. Uh, but the goal is for it to be clean, readable, and make a customer want to buy it in addition to including some of those highly searched relevant terms. Okay, next up we have our product features, also referred to as the product bullet points. And again, we're gonna, we're gonna start with our true HEPA air purifier. Now you don't have to include that at the top. There's not, no benefit to putting it the, in your first product feature, but it is important if a customer is searching for that, that they see it uh, as the first product feature or one of the first few product features, right? Because we need to convince them that they have found the product that they were looking for. Okay, so it's as much for conversion as it is for discoverability. And then you can see we've used these other additional terms like germs and air purifier and allergens sprinkled throughout the product features so that we can reinforce, um, you know, with the A9 algorithm, letting them know that yes, this is a relevant, a relevant product for those search terms. Okay. Now this is something that 90% or more of all sellers do wrong on Amazon. Okay. So I want you to pay attention to this section. I'll try to make it really, really clear. What I've done is there's a search term section in your backend called generic search terms or search terms. Okay. What I've done is I've highlighted in blue all the search terms that are already being used in our product title. Okay. So air purifier and air purifier for home and uh, all those different ones. We don't have to put those in search terms in the back end. Okay. Your title is your most heavily weighted search field. So you don't have to duplicate those uh, keywords in your search terms. What we're going to do is highlight all the other uh, keywords in our search results, our SEO keyword research that aren't in the title. And those are then going to make up the relevant keywords for our search terms in the back end. So things like allergies and pets or large room. In this case, we have house, right? So even if they search for home, uh, if they search for house instead, we're going to show up. And what Amazon's A9 search algorithm is going to do is it's going to compile, uh, compile and combine these search terms. So if somebody searches for true HEPA air purifier for uh, pet dander, for example, we can still show up because we have those search terms in the title and the search terms in the back end. Okay, making sense? Okay, if, you, if, if it doesn't make sense, put it in the questions. Uh, but overall, did you guys find that helpful? You know, uh, give Becky some feedback, let her know in the chat box if this is uh, valuable for you guys so far. Okay, number two, growing your brand using advertising to organically rank your product. Okay, now what we're gonna talk about here is we are going to talk about Amazon advertising. I had this graphic made because I really wanted to create a visual representation of what advertising really looked like. Okay. So what I've done is uh, what I've done is I've gone ahead and created this graphic and shown in blue uh, your branded search terms. Okay. So this castle in the middle, this is med medieval times uh, with the blue flags and the blue moat. That's your branded search terms. Okay. That's the first thing that you want to do is make sure that you are defending your castle, your turf, right? By advertising on your branded search terms. Now, everything else is green, all the pasture in the middle. Okay. That is unclaimed territory. Those are generic keywords and depend on the category, approximately 80% of all searches on Amazon uh, are going to be unbranded or generic. So that's your greatest opportunity for growth. Okay. is going after those generic terms. Once you've fully built out that and you're advertising on all your generic terms, then you can actually be even more aggressive and actually go after competitor search terms. Okay. Actually invading their castle or territory as it were. Um, and that's the same reason why you want to bid on your own brand name to keep other people from stealing, uh, st stealing branded sales from you. Uh, now the last section is sort of the sand trap, if you will, that's wasted ad spend. Okay. That's bidding on keywords that simply don't convert that are just wasting money. Okay. So that's kind of high level visual. Um, in terms of defining advertising efficiency, Amazon uses this term called ACOS, okay, acquired cost of sale. And ACOS is really simple. It's just taking your ad spend divided by your revenue, and that's what equals your ACOS, okay? So if you spend $200 and you make $1,000 in gross revenue, that's a 20% ACOS, okay? Pretty straightforward. And a lot of brand owners are asking the question, what should my target A cost be? Okay, we get this all the time. What's my target A cost? Okay, there's not one answer, but I wanna break it down by those uh, categories that we just talked about. So branded terms, for example, 
typically you're going to want or see a five to 10% ACoS. Okay. Lowest cost per click and lowest ACoS because it's very easy to uh, retain your own customers. Right. Um, and that's going after, in this case, Max Blaster, you know, HEPA air purifiers, for example. Okay. We want to bid on those. Those are our branded terms. Generic terms, anywhere between 10 to 30%. It can be higher or lower and very based on, again, on the category and the level of competition. And those are the generic unbranded terms, just like air purifier and HEPA air purifier, et cetera. And the last, we've got the competitor terms, 30 to 50% ACoS. In some cases, it's much higher. Again, depending on how well the brand is known. This is actually going after a specific brand. So like Honeywell air purifier, Honeywell air filter, et cetera, okay? So those are the general uh, ACoS um, sort of boundaries that you're gonna typically deal with. So target ACoS depends on level of competition, how comp uh, competitive the keywords of the category is, the price and profitability of your products, right? If you have more profit margin, you can afford a higher ACoS and your target growth strategy. In some cases, people say, we wanna do minimal advertising. Let's be really profitable and just grow slowly. Other people are in huge growth mode. Let's acquire customers. We know the long-term value, et cetera. And that's gonna determine your target ACoS. Okay, so this is, may seem like an oversimplistic concept. It's not, I promise you. It's so critical, and you'll understand why as we talk about we, the specific mistakes that we see a lot of brands make. The key to Amazon advertising is to advertise specific products for specific search terms. That's it, okay? Specific products for specific search terms. And so what I mean by that is here's our Max Blaster air purifier, and we're going to now start by advertising all the keywords that we just determined we're relevant, okay? In addition to the ones that we are gonna include in our listing, in our title, we're gonna just target all of them, okay? And this is a really important part and kind of goes beyond the, the aspect of just organically ranking, right? Because advertising keywords impacts your organic rank, just like we talked about at the beginning, okay? So if somebody searches for true HEPA air purifier, and I'm specifically bidding on that term, and my product comes up as a sponsored product listing at the top, and that customer buys that product and adds it to their card and checks out, over time, my product is gonna organically increase in rank for the term true HEPA air purifier, right? And that's basically it, it's as simple as it is. Now, ACoS is not the only metric, okay? A lot of people are just kind of go off ACoS, but I wanna take this and expand this to the next level. So this is where we get our term called tacos. Okay, I was told this was uh, coined by a take -A metrics employee. Um, take -A metrics does Amazon advertising uh, and they do uh, software solutions as well as done for you services. And the idea of tacos is your total acquired cost of sale, okay? So in this case, we look at our ad spend of $200, but our total revenue of our paid sales and our organic sales of $2,000, and that gives us a 10% ACoS, okay? And the reason again for that is, we're taking into account not just the direct sales that we're getting from advertising, but as our products are advertised for specific keywords and they rank higher for those keywords, it's also helping generate organic sales. And that's why we look at tacos as a holistic measure. So that's why we say the best Amazon advertising strategy is to optimize keyword advertising for either profitability or ranking. Okay. So you're going to advertise for profitability or ranking. And so that's why it's so important to track the organic ranking for your products so that you can circle back and see how effective it is. I, I love Jungle Scout. Uh, they've got a great tool to be able to track the product's organic rank for specific keywords. So again, you can just take all those search terms from our keyword research, dump them into Jungle Scout with your ASIN, and Jungle Scout will track the organic rank over time. <clears throat> okay, now this is a pretty typical Amazon advertising structure. Again, if you're, maybe you're not advertising or you're already advertising, this is gonna make a ton of sense to you. At the top level, we have your campaign. Underneath, you've got ad groups. And then in each ad group, you've got products and keywords, okay? Pretty, pretty simple structure. That said, the three biggest advertising mistakes that I see most brand owners make is number one, putting multiple products into one ad group. See it all the time. We were helping a client last week and just looking at all of these products, all just thrown into one ad group. And the problem is you can't determine which product is being advertised for which keywords or which product converted for which keywords, okay? It gives you bad data. Uh, the second one that we see most commonly is putting multiple ad groups into a single campaign. And the reason for that is because Amazon does not equally distribute or allocate your budget amongst multiple ad groups. So Amazon may take your $100 budget 
and spend 90% of it in one ad group and only 10% in another. And you can't tell Amazon that you want to spend more in one ad group than another. And so again, you may not be able to advertise the products that you want to in those other ad groups. Lastly, so critical, again, putting branded, generic, and competitor terms all together. Now, if you go back to that original slide, it's going to make sense. We want to see what our branded search terms are, our generic, and our competitor. And when we put them all in the same ad group, we can't see that data. And so the, the, the key is, as a brand owner, to know the percentage of sales coming from my branded terms, which are retaining my current existing clients or customers, generic terms, which represents growth, and then competitor terms, which is really represents aggressive growth, and be able to bid and budget appropriately for those three different categories. Okay, does that make sense? Okay, so here's why Amazon advertising best practices are number one, one product per ad group, even for multi packs. Okay, because if you got a one pack and a six pack, those are different uh, average order values, right? You can afford to spend more on the multi pack than the single. So separate them into tip, uh, and separate ad groups. One ad group per campaign, and then separate your branded, generic, and competitor campaigns so that you know what your conversion and your cost is for each of those. Okay, are you guys getting this? Is this making sense? Uh, love to get feedback. I'm sorry I can't see all of you. Wish this was uh, live in a big auditorium, but here we are on Zoom and we're gonna keep going. So get to any questions at the end if you guys have them. Okay, last section, number three, protecting your brand, using a trademark to protect your brand from competitors. So we're going to talk about the benefits of this. Uh, some of you guys may very rightly be thinking, I don't, I don't know if I need a trademark. Okay. But I want to tell you a true story. This is uh, my dad worked for a company or a real estate company for many, many years when I was growing up and 10 years into the business, they never got a trademark for their company. They never got a trademark for the brand. And another company came along and said, Hey, by the way, we got the trademark on your company name and you have to change it. And they had to rebrand everything. I mean, every business card, every legal document, all of their marketing materials, all their signage, everything was incredibly expensive. They had to redo everything and start over from scratch, okay? You've got to protect your brand. And even if you're a private label looking to grow to the brand level, it's absolutely essential. Okay, so benefits of a trademark. Number one, you get access to Amazon brand registry. This gives you three primary things. Number one, it gives you detail page control. This means you can control the content on the detail page, the product images, the features, the title, uh, A plus content and the videos, okay? Um, especially if other people have been selling your product on Amazon before you got there. Number two, trademark enforcement. It keeps other people from using your brand name in their products. If you don't have a registered trademark, they can do whatever they want and there's nothing you can do to stop them. Uh, lastly, brand registry benefits, which I'll cover here briefly, okay? so. A plus content, 60% of people scroll down and read the description, beautiful uh, landing page uh, style graphics that you can include here. If not, otherwise you're just stuck with HTML uh, text descriptions, okay? You can do an Amazon storefront for your brand. So if somebody clicks on your brand, instead of just seeing a generic search results of all your products on Amazon, you can take them to this beautiful mini website where you can have videos and you can have call outs and information, tell them your brand story, engage them, show them your full product line. Okay, for a lot of brands, it, it drastically increases their average order value. Okay, you can only get that if you've got a registered trademark. Brand ads, which give you premium real estate right at the top. Um, again, in conjunction with your sponsored product listings, really, really critical. Copyright enforcement, right? Nobody wants to spend hours kind of scrolling through Amazon trying to see if somebody else is using their images. You can upload your primary product images to Amazon's uh, copyright infringement image search, and Amazon will search the entire Amazon database and pull up any listings that are using your copyrighted images, okay? So you can use their infringement tool in brand registry to file copyright infringements, trademark infringements, right inside the tool, super fast, super easy, but you gotta have a registered, trade, registered trademark. Okay, some of you guys are thinking that's great, but I've got a problem with unauthorized resellers, okay? So can a trademark help me get rid of unauthorized resellers? And the answer is yes, okay? Using a trademark plus a warranty, you can create a material difference between your product and a product that a reseller's selling using a warranty, okay? So even the pro though the products look exactly the same, uh, you can create what's called a material difference and that allows you to legally remove unauthorized resellers so that you can control the platform and you can continue advertising and winning the buy box on the platform. Okay. So we did this a couple of years ago, I worked with a company called TableMate. 
They had not been on Amazon, kind of ignored the Amazon presence of the brand. And we got on there and it was just a complete mess, but they had a registered trademark. We got brand registry. Uh, we were able to kick off, I think something like 135 unauthorized resellers. We are able to remove over 50 or 60 uh, listings that had, you know, selling counterfeit products that had our trademark using our copyrighted images. And we were basically able to take all the benefits of brand registry, our A plus content, storefronts and brand ads. And we took them to a million dollars the first year. And it all was because they had a registered trademark and brand registry. Okay. Now some of you guys might be thinking that's great, but I don't know what kind of trademark to get. I'll, I'll outline it for you. No problem. There's two kinds of trademarks. The first is called a word mark. This is typically your brand name in this case, or example, Amazon, and then a design mark, which is your brand logo. Okay. In this case, Amazon with a little Amazon smile. And ideally you want to get both, but if you're limited on budget or just want to start with one, typically a, an attorney is going to recommend you start with a word mark. You can talk to your IP attorney about that. Now I know what you're thinking, right? Some brand owners are also thinking, I don't know where to get started registering a trademark for my brand. Okay. You can use Amazon's IP accelerator to easily register your trademark with one of their pre-vetted IP accelerator attorneys. Okay. Just go to brandservices.amazon.com forward slash IP accelerator. And the cool thing about this is if you register through IP accelerator, you're going to get access to brand registry benefits typically within 30 days as opposed to the nine to 12 months that it may take a typical attorney to get your trademark fully registered. Okay. Are you guys enjoying the webinar so far? Uh, again, uh, throw it up in the chat bar. would love to hear what you guys are thinking. Um, if you've gotten some really cool value out of it, um, we've covered launching your brand again, using SEO and integrating that into your listing, growing the brand using Amazon advertising and how to protect your brand using a registered trademark. Um, now what I'd like to do is I'd like to share something really special with you guys. Uh, if you guys aren't interested, that's totally fine. I'll skip it. But if you are just put yes or yes, please, or whatever in the chat box and let us know that you guys would like to hear more. I see those popping up right now. Okay. I'll go, ahead, I'll go ahead and do this. This is something that I've been working on the last five years. Okay. And it's called the Amazon brand success Academy. I spent five years of my life building and developing the most comprehensive online course for brand owners. Okay. And I'm going to really quickly take you guys through what this looks like and what it covers. Um, just to give you a little insight and still drop some Amazon nuggets along the way. Okay. Um, it's all about helping you optimize your listings, launch your products, increase sales and retain control of your brand again, without violating Amazon policy. Everything's in line with TOS and real quick, high level, what you get. Uh, we've got six courses in the Amazon brand success Academy. You get access to all of them. So intro to selling on Amazon. If you're not yet on Amazon or just getting started, this is a great mini course to go through, understand Amazon, how they think, how they operate, some fulfillment options and fees, as well as some market and competitor research, setting up your storefront, uh, which is not just about your seller bio. It's about building the whole infrastructure of your account, making sure that you've got all the tools and resources integrated so that you can be scalable, right? We cover health metrics and customer service training tools to scale your business. Really, really critical for growth. Amazon listing optimization, obviously the sexy one that everybody wants to get to first, but make sure you go through it in order. Uh, SEO keyword research, titles, features, images, videos. Uh, and we also teach you how to do something that most brand owners don't know how to do, which is how to analyze your sessions and conversions, right? Most people don't even know where to find that report. You've got to be able to understand what's working, what's not working and why. Our launching new products course, we cover campaigns and promotions, getting product reviews, obviously mentioning tools like Feedback 5, um, as well as partnership and affiliate marketing, using some off Amazon marketing strategies to drive traffic and sales to your Amazon listing. Uh, this is a really, really valuable course, Amazon Professional Seller Issues. Okay, we talk about distribution enforcement in length, okay, trademark and copyright infringement, as well as probably one of the most critical ones, suspension, prevention, and reinstatement, right? You've got to be prepared and do everything you can to prevent uh, suspension. It happens to almost everybody. Um, and for manufacturers, the number one reason that we see is late shipping, late for uh, merchant flood shipping. So make sure you've got uh, infrastructure in place to prevent that. Um, the last course is just Amazon flat file templates. Sounds simple enough, but I don't think there's any other courses out there about it. Um, really complicated. If you ever have used these Excel flat file templates, I'm going to walk you through exactly how to use them. You can activate brand registry, download a category listing report, which is a full download of all of your current Amazon listings that you're selling, as well as how to contact the catalog department 
or brand registry support when you're having issues uh, escalating some of those problems. Now, the other cool thing that you get access to is our Ecom Bootcamp. So this is actually a fun event that we put together with Ecom Engine. It was sponsored by Payability last year. Um, and we've got six incredible talks by some incredible Amazon experts, social media experts. Um, it was focused on food brands, but I promise you, it will be uh, relevant to any brand on Amazon. So distribution enforcement. Again, I spoke about customer service. We've got social media growth, uh, free access to the Ecom Bootcamps. It's six hours of, of talks and Q&A uh, sessions with uh, Amazon and SEO experts. Uh, so this is a really cool uh, testimonial by Tam O'Hreen, right? He just said, when we started to launch Napier, we had no idea what we needed to do to be successful on Amazon, okay? Shannon's course on launching new products provides a great overview of the steps that needed to be taken so that an Amazon newcomer could be as successful as possible with their listing. So just a really cool testimonial that it really works for anybody, whether you're an established brand or just getting started. This is one from George Clark, a manufacturer, um, right? Really understanding the platform. And then uh, <clears throat> this is Nadia Khan, incredible product and brand called Wabri Syrup. Her child cannot pronounce the word strawberry. He called it Wabri, so she named it after that. Um, but I just love these testimonials because it shows me the impact that it can make in somebody's different, uh, in somebody's business who's frustrated um, and trying to deal with Amazon or feels overwhelmed. Okay, so real quick, what you get, Amazon strategy training videos. Um, so we go through this and we teach you the strategies critical for success. Okay, so everything from listing optimization, advertising, and building brand equity, which is a customer's per perceived value of your brand on Amazon. And I, I think Amazon is a lot like a chess game, okay? It's basically equal, okay? The same rules, the same pieces, whoever has a better strategy is gonna win, that's it, okay? And so the Amazon strategy training videos is the first uh, piece that you get. We've got six courses, 30 lessons in, 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 throughout all the six courses. And the first thing you get in every lesson is a strategy training video, okay? You're also gonna ac get access to Amazon seller resources. And these are gonna help you do things like perform better SEO keyword research. I've walked through high level today, but show you a little more in depth other strategies that you can use. Getting high quality product photos and writing copy that actually sells, so critical, okay? It took me years to figure out you know, all these uh, different resources and tools, and you're gonna get access to them in the course where you need them, okay? So we got Amazon seller resources, the second part of it, and then our action steps to success. So I've spent, again, years learning all the exact steps that you need to take to be successful, and I'm gonna give you those action steps you need in sequential order, okay? If you do it out of order, it's like changing the oil in your car and skipping steps or doing it backwards, okay? It's gonna be a bad, bad news, okay? There are certain things on Amazon that you wanna do in a specific order in order to make sure, thing, sure things get set up correctly. Okay, action steps to success. Um, lastly, or almost lastly, we've got access to a private Facebook group, okay? So you can get inside the Facebook group, ask questions, and there's even a Q&A section right inside the course where you can pause a video or ask a question to get your answers that you need and the help you need. So uh, Becky Avila had asked a question on a Facebook group and she said, I wasn't expecting all of my questions to be addressed. So thank you so much for the reply. This speaks volumes to this group's value. Okay, a lot of Facebook groups, you're gonna get random answers. In this Facebook group, you're gonna get access to me and other Amazon experts that we tag in the group to answer your specific questions. So you know you're getting reliable, credible information. Okay, so access to private Facebook group and Q&A section. And the last part is the over shoulder tutorial video tips. Okay, so this is where we actually do a screen share Narrative screen share showing you how to do the thing that we just talked about doing. Um, Amazon is a maze, 100%. And the, the narrated video screen shares and the video tips are gonna give you shortcuts to be able to achieve your goals quickly, okay? So huge value with the uh, over-the-shoulder tutorial video tips. Uh, you also get access for a free additional employee, okay? So if you got another employee with an email address at the same domain, you can actually give them free access to the course as well because we don't allow uh, course sharing, basically. Okay. If that wasn't enough, we're gonna finish it up. I've got, I'm just gonna to try to make this as easy as I can for you guys. Strategy training videos, Amazon seller resources, action steps to success, private Facebook group in a Q&A section, over the shoulder tutorial video tips, and access for a free additional employee for free. And basically it's a one-time payment of 997, or we even have an option that we just introduced a few months ago. You can do four monthly payments of 297 if that works out better for you. Um, I think Colleen or Becky will go ahead and throw up the link to go ahead and get started on that. Um, what I love about this is it's a one-time purchase, okay? 
lifetime access as long as the course is available online. You get access to all the new videos that we add to those courses, all the new resources. As Amazon makes updates, we make updates to the course and it's like this living organism. So it's like a live action uh, active subscription, but you only have to pay one time. This is, this is really the most important part, okay? Um, because of the time I spend in East Africa, we're actually committed to donating 10%. We donate 10% of all Amazon Brand Success Academy course sales. Some of the organizations and individuals in East Africa uh, that we worked with, and it helps empower them with things like microloans and business skills and higher education. This is Eric uh, Mollel and Eric uh, Kisivan. And I can tell you right now what they're facing with COVID. Um, they are basically in the tourism business and it's basically shut down. Okay, Amazon Brand Success Course uh, Academy sales are essentially helping put food on the table right now in this sort of dire emergency. It's so cool to see them also be empowered with that higher education and ability to grow their business. So uh, if you guys for any reason aren't satisfied, you get 30 days, um, go through the whole course. If you're not happy, just email us back. We'll send you a link, refund your money. So literally no risk. You can go through it and uh, get all the information that you need and decide if it's a good fit for you. So here's my promise to you guys. If you're a brand owner selling on Amazon, I guarantee that this will be the best investment you'll ever make. And again, if you're not happy, no problem. You can just grab that refund. Um, the first three attendees to purchase, I'm going to give a free 60 minute Amazon coaching session. We charge $250 an hour for this. Okay. So I'm just going to be watching the inbox <laughs> once the webinar is over the first three people who get their credit card out and are able to go ahead and purchase, you get a free um, coaching session. We'll go ahead and email you the link later to go ahead and get that booked. Um, I know some of you guys are thinking, look, selling on Amazon is too complicated. It's true. It is. Um, but the Amazon brand success Academy, you're really going to make it really easy. That's what we've worked really hard to do. So I'd say if anything, my talent is just taking lots of really complicated information and organizing it and making it really simple for other people to understand. So if you found this webinar helpful and found that I was able to explain whether it was SEO or advertising in a way that really made sense for you, um, just imagine that sort of the course is sort of that on steroids. Um, so again, uh, the link will be in the chat bar, um, but you can go to marketplace sellercourse.com forward slash ecom engine again, 997, or you guys can do the four month payment option, but we have, crammed through some incredible content. And now I'm excited to get into some of the questions for the Q and A. So um, Becky, thanks for jumping back on. And do you want to talk about the free brand monitoring checklist? Sure. Um, so this is just an, a resource that we've created at Ecom Engine to help you monitor everything that you need to be paying attention to for your brand online. Um, it's just a really simple checklist that you can download. And Colleen has got the link to that in the chat, my colleague there. Um, and then, yeah, Shannon's told you a lot about the Amazon Brand Success Academy, and it's an awesome opportunity. So I don't know if we want to get into Q&A or if you had anything else to cover there, Shannon. Yeah, let's see what questions people had. I'd love to spend the next, you know, 15 or so minutes um, before we wrap up with any questions that anybody has, either about the course, Amazon, SEO, advertising. I know there's usually a ton of follow-up. So yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. Yeah. So um, the first one you got was, what is the back end of search terms? What is the back end of search terms? Um, so if you're going into your listing, an interactive listing tool, um, there's a section, I believe it's called search or keywords, and you'll, you'll see a uh, field marked search terms in there. And that's where you're going to find that section. It's a little confusing that we use the term search terms to identify a field in Amazon, as well as just the keywords that you're ranking for. Um, but that's kind of it. In a flat file template, in an Excel template, it's actually called, I think, generic search or generic keywords. Um, there's a section that people see called platinum keywords, and I usually go into seller accounts and just see tons of keywords in there. It doesn't do anything, so ignore the platinum keywords. Um, just put them in the search terms. And a really important note on that, Amazon caps it out at 250 characters, including spaces. If you go over that, Amazon will not index anything. Okay, so make sure that you stay within that limit. And if you want to have your auto campaigns for advertising be really relevant, um, excuse me, then make sure that you're not putting in any other sort of irrelevant terms or whatever. You can't put in a competitor brand terms or anything like that, um, but make sure that you are using best practices for search terms for sure. Great. Um, and then we got, what is the maximum keyword we should put in an ad group? I think the maximum number of keywords is yeah, there isn't, there isn't a maximum keyword. Um, 
Destiny with Sean at Better AMS is a great thought leader. Um, you can follow them. They just uh, are revamping their YouTube channel. So just search Better AMS. And they were the ones who really talked about this idea. As long as you're separating the categories of the keywords that you're trying to go after, um, they can put hundreds or thousands. Because again, as long as they're on one ad group and you can allocate 100% of your campaign budget to the ad group, Amazon will show it all day long. Um, one sort of side note about that with advertising is Amazon likes momentum. Okay, so I see sellers again uh, create campaigns called uh, October 2018 and then like fall 2020, like, and they just run that campaign for like a month or two. It doesn't have time to build up steam and get data. Okay, so you want to make sure that you're really running your campaigns long term. Um, but say, for example, if we were going after air purifier, and then there was sort of like a tangential term that we wanted to go after that was maybe a little more risky, we would want to put those in a different campaign. But there's really no maximum, um, you know, that you can put in a single ad group or campaign. It's, uh, it's just about the budget that gets allocated to that campaign. And as long as you got budget, your Amazon will show the, the ads and the products. Great. Let's see. With tacos, does it mean I should spend 10% of my revenue for advertising on average? No, again, it, it, it totally depends on, um, again, what the profit level or margin of your product is, the level of competition for your category, and what your growth strategy is, okay? So in some cases, in a lot of cases, generally speaking, most brands are going to say, I don't want more than 30 to 40% of my sales coming in from ads. I want to be able to get a certain amount that's generic because if I, you know, decrease advertising or anything happens, I don't want my sales to just tank. So the, the goal is you want to have a, a percentage of organic sales, certainly. And a lot of brands, again, are sort of targeting maybe a 30% A cost. But within that 30% A cost, some keywords are going to convert at 10%. So it means if you want to, you can include keywords that convert at 60%. Um, as long as you're getting sales. And if at any point you feel like a keyword is just too high a cost, just decrease your uh, bid on the keyword. You don't have to pause it or stop it. If it's generating sales, it means it's a relevant keyword. If you're not getting the a cost you want, just decrease the bid until you're able to match it up. You're going to get fewer sales, but you'll show up on page two or three and your conversion rate should still be the same. Great. Um, and then someone asked about the Facebook group. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that's part of your course, right? Right. It's exclusive to, uh, uh, customers who purchase the Amazon Brand Success Academy. And like Becky and other Amazon experts from different fields, from customer service and accounting are all in that group. And we'll tag them if a question comes up. Um, but yeah, that is a invite only um, at, with, with course purchase uh, approval, if that was part of the question. Yep. yep. All right. If my organic sales and conversions are already very high, do you think PPC is still valuable to grow? <sighs> yeah, it's a good question. Um, <clears throat> Amazon more and more is becoming a pay to play platform. So again, it depends on the category. In some cases you don't have a lot of competition, that's fine. Or you're happy with your current sales and you don't really care to grow, that's, that's fine. Um, make sure that if somebody searches for the brand name that you don't have a ton of competitors doing advertising at the top. Um, and it's, all, it's always worth testing, right? I think some, some brand owners are concerned that if they advertise in their own brand name, they're gonna cannibalize their organic sales which yes, can happen to some extent, um, but it's going to be a really, really low A cost. Um, what I encouraged a company that came to me with this exact question a month ago or so was, we used Helium 10 to use a reverse ASIN lookup of the keywords that they were organically ranking for, but in positions like between 12 and 18. So basically at the bottom of, uh, bottom of page one, okay, 66 or so percent of sales come through the top three listings for an organic search. So we said, look, target the terms that you're pretty far down on the page for. And if you can drive additional sales using that keyword, you should be able to track it again, using jungle scout, the increase rank organically. And then you're going to really be able to see, okay, is the advertising actually making a difference um, in my organic sales and my organic ranking? So I would say that's probably a pretty safe recommendation. If you're already ranking for it, Amazon already knows the product is relevant for that search term. Um, but it doesn't mean you should just, you know, again, turn on ads and throw tons of money at it. Um, it has to be done very smartly um, and calculated. And again, it just depends on your growth strategy. If you're happy with sales, great. If you want to grow them, then advertise. Yeah. Um, and then we got, we shouldn't duplicate the keywords in our title in the search term section, but can we duplicate it on the features section? Yes. 
<clears throat> yeah, you can definitely reinforce. Now, this is another really cool point, okay? So, for example, um, A9 algorithm says you don't need to duplicate keywords in your listings. That's fine. But Google likes to see what they call reinforced keywords, okay? So they like to see it in your title and in your product features and in your description. And you'll notice if you do A plus content, when you upload an image, it asks for a, an image keyword, okay? That's also called an alt text or alt tag, okay? And Google indexes that. And what we see is more and more um, companies and brands, their Amazon listings are ranking for organic search terms on Google. And Google's actually driving tons of organic traffic to their listing if they've optimized their SEO with a sort of reinforced strategy, repeating keywords throughout the page. And there's a really cool tool I, I posted on LinkedIn the other day. Um, it's called uh, Traffic Insights. And it's a tool called Sellerly uh, by SEM Rush, And you can actually put in your ASINs and see where that traffic is coming from. So you can look at competitors' listings and see if they're getting where they're getting their Google traffic from. Um, you can put in your own listings and see if you're getting or, organic traffic from Google. And that could be a really cool insight to help you optimize your listings, not just to rank in Amazon, but to rank your Amazon listings in Google based on their domain authority. Very cool. And then switching gears a little bit, um, Colleen sort of answered this, but I wanna give you the chance to speak to it a bit. So someone said they were having issues submitting their brand registry application. Um, they did what you said, and it says there's one under review, but they can't see a status at all, and there are no cases. They're not sure what to do, whether they should retry or get on and walk through it with you or if you have any recommendations. And Colleen had pointed out your um, Amazon brand registry blog post, mm -hmm. which I think is really helpful. I don't know if there's any more insight you want to share there. Yeah, that's, that's pretty strange. Um, typically, if you have a registered trademark and you have the registered trademark number, not just a serial number, but a trademark number, and it has the word mark um, for your brand in that, in that trademark, um, then you should be able to see that pretty quick. We usually see brand registry turned around pretty quickly in three or four days. Uh, if it takes longer, in some cases, we've seen it take up to a week. Um, you might be able to reach out to brand registry support, but I think they limit it until you actually get a brand enrolled. So it's the whole chicken and egg uh, challenge. Um, I would say if you haven't heard anything in a week, um, you could at bare minimum open up a case with seller support and ask them to pass it to brand registry and see if they're able to do that. If not brand registry support, um, there is an email address for them. And maybe we can get that person, uh, we can get that information to that person later, but there's not a direct way to, to telephone brand registry support. But typically within a week, if you don't see anything happening, you might wanna follow up on that. Okay, great. And then someone asked if this applies to vendors rather than sellers. So your course, is it really designed for sellers? Can vendors benefit? Yeah, it's a great question and uh, something we didn't have a full chance to cover today. The Amazon Brand Success Academy is primarily focused on Seller Central, okay? The only things that are really gonna be relevant, relevant are some of the listing optimization and some of the advertising pieces. Uh, distribution enforcement can as well, but in terms of the benefits that we've seen being migrated from Vendor Central to Seller Central over the last couple of years with Brand Registry, we've seen a massive migration of a lot of brands saying, hey, let's migrate from Vendor Central to Seller Central. And there's three primary reasons for that. Number one, they can control their pricing better, right? They can set their own pricing. Two, they control their inventory. And three, they can control the customer experience better. So you can't send feedback five emails if you're using Vendor Central. You can't regulate what Amazon sells your product at using Vendor Central. Seller Central, you set the prices, you set the, um, uh, you know, whatever the price is for the product and, and you control the inventory. And you can do everything now in Seller Central that you could in, brand, uh, in Vendor Central with Brand Registry. So all the A-plus content, your brand ad storefronts, it's available across for both of them. Um, so something to consider, but the courses are primarily for sellers and brands uh, using Seller Central. Okay, great. And then back to keywords, there's a lot of questions about that. Yeah, let's um, do it. In your example of the air purifier product, you said not to include keywords in search terms if they were already included in the product title. Can you explain why that, expand on why that is? Why not include the keyword air purifier in the search terms also? So, so two reasons for that. Number one, the title is actually just the most highly weighted search field. So think of that as your primary search field and then the search terms in the back end are additional, okay? So the, the, you, that's why you want your most important keywords in the title. Uh, number two, Amazon tells you not to do it, okay? So if you look at their policy and, and uh, best practices, they tell you not to do it. And number three, 
there's typically, it's typically taking up space for other keywords that you could be including in your search term. And because you're capped on that 250 character limit, you don't want to put keywords that are already in your title. Um, a quick note on that, you don't have to do stemming. So purifier, purified, purifies, Amazon knows those are all the same keywords. You don't have to do that. But if you do it a different word like house or home, you can put the alternate uh, keyword in your search terms and it's going to help. It's going to help. Don't, don't do typos as well. I, I see a lot of people saying, oh, do typos. Amazon knows what a typo is. Okay. They're going to find the keyword. They're not fans based on the new um, updates, to the communication guidelines. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then um, someone asked, what do you recommend for a brand who is listing a product in a new market that doesn't get much generic volume? Yes. Okay. Listing a new product in a category market that doesn't have a lot of generic volume. So this is true for a lot of innovative products. And the key to this, if there's no SEO, you've got to focus on off Amazon marketing and partnership marketing. Okay. So if I've got a, a cool baby product that nobody's ever seen before, nobody's searching for it. It's amazing. It's going to really help moms, but they don't know it exists. So they're not going to search for it. So this is where like going after affiliates, mommy bloggers, uh, influencers, YouTube, Facebook, um, really, really critical to introduce them to your product and then use Amazon as the preferred sales platform. Why? Because Amazon ha already has everybody's address and credit card information stored, right? People will convert higher on Amazon than any other website. So I think basically the goal is um, to go through and make sure that you can figure out where your audience is and get in front of them. But video is almost always a critical aspect of that and would highly recommend uh, companies you know, if you've got an innovative product, you've got to invest in video because people have to see it to believe it. You got to show them how it works and then get those videos in front of influencers, affiliates, and partners who have your audience that they can share it with them and then just drive that traffic to Amazon. Awesome. Um, and then another brand registry question. So okay. someone says, I publish niche products and would want maybe 10 to 20 products on Amazon. Does it make sense to do brand registry for a small number of products? Absolutely. I mean, again, if you don't, um, anybody can just take whatever your brand name is and use it on their product. There's literally nothing stopping them. And again, depending on how serious you are uh, making the investment in brand registering or trademark, you get access to all these benefits that are going to be able to increase your sales that you otherwise wouldn't have access to. So if you're serious about growing it and building it, you, you want to make the investment. Again, if somebody else buys your trademark first, you're going to have to get kicked off. So again, that example that I gave about my dad's company, very real. Uh, it depends on how serious you are and the investment that you make, but it's probably going to, if you leverage it correctly, should uh, generate increased sales uh, just by using the benefits of brand registry for sure. Um, so then next up, if I'm ranked 12 in the 12 to 18 positions for a keyword that I'm very relevant for and want to grow organically, do you recommend running an exact match campaign to grow my organic ranking or something else like branded ads, video ads, phrase ads, broad, or another type? Yeah. So I would say because 70% of uh, sponsored sales or, or advertised sales are sponsored product listings. And it again, goes back to specific product, specific keyword. I would at minimum do phrase and exact. Um, you could also include some broad match as well. Um, but again, if they search that exact term, but add on a couple additional words, it's still going to help you rank better for that term. Um, so there's nothing wrong with doing broad, but always uh, bid higher for exact than phrase and higher for phrase than broad. And using that strategy, going after those keywords, again, same ad group, you should be able to, um, you know, be able to, to quantify the impact that it's making. And in some cases, people will create a whole separate campaign just called ranking campaign. <clears throat> and in some cases you could say, okay, this, this campaign is just set up to, to track ranking for this keyword and, and see how that impacts it. But you could probably put several in there. Um, but again, if somebody doesn't search that exact term, then it's not gonna show up at all. So using the, the phrase and broad can help that but make sure you're bidding more on the exact than phrase and more on phrase than broad. All right. And then I think one final question, I know it's three o'clock sure. and some people have to jump off. So um, can you advertise your Amazon listing on other paid social media ads? Yes. Yeah. And I've checked that both with Google and Amazon and Facebook, no issue um, doing that. There's actually a really cool tool called landing cube. 
if you want an intermediary. And what Landing Cube does is you put in your ASIN and it builds out basically a landing page for it. And you can add additional videos. If you're launching a new product and you've got product reviews from your website, you can add that to the landing page. And instead of driving traffic to an Amazon listing where the customer is going to see all of the other sponsored products and other ads and you know, related products and stuff and make very quickly click away, um, Landing Cube is going to give them a landing page for that product. And then they can, from there, once they're committed, make the decision to buy the product on Amazon. You can include uh, coupon codes. You can ask for email address opt-ins or that kind of thing. But you're driving that traffic off Amazon to an intermediary. Um, but uh, yeah, people do it all the time. And in fact, the Amazon storefronts, you can actually create what's called a custom tag um, to be able to track incoming uh, sales and revenue from third-party channels like Facebook. Cool. Well, this was fantastic. Um, thank you, Shannon, so much for sharing your expertise with all of us today. I know uh, people had a lot of questions and I expect you'll get some follow-up in your inbox. Um, thank you to everyone for attending. We appreciate you spending the time with us and we'll see you next time. Yeah, thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you everybody for attending.